Hey, what's up, Bully World? It's Dave Wilson right here. I just want to give y'all a, a quick update on a couple things real fast. Um, I just got finished doing an interview with Ty Lumley. Y'all should check it out. It'll air tomorrow on Bull in a China Shop. So if you want to see it, check it out at Bull, the letter N, the letter A, Chinashop.com. Bull in a China Shop .com. It'll air tomorrow. It was a, a, a great interview. It was fun doing something with Ty. Ty. Ty Lumley's been around for a while now. He's just a straight shooter. So it gives you a chance to get an interview from a different perspective, maybe not so politically correct because, like I said, he's a straight shooter. So check it out tomorrow. That should air sometime midday at bullinachinashop.com. That's bullinachinashop.com. Um, aside from that, I just want to give you all an update on the June 3rd show. So for anybody that – give me one second here. What's up, Chris? Just about to give update here. All right. So give you all an update. June 3rd, right here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, we are going to bring back the Back to the Bullies show. It's going to be Back to the Bullies 2. For those of you who don't know, we did the very first ever Back to the Bullies show here in Virginia. I think the initial date that we did it was, I think, October of 2005. Um, don't quote me on that because these days I'm not as good with dates as I once was. Um, shoot, if anybody knows me, I, I've never been good at dates. I've never been good at telling you how old my dogs were. Um, in fact, if you know me really well, my dogs are either eight weeks, three months, six months, nine months, or a year. Uh, there's nothing in between because that's, that's, I'm never good with any of that kind of stuff. So just so you all know. But anyway, I believe the first Back to the Bully show was in Virginia, and it was October of 2005, possibly 2006, if I'm not mistaken. Today I just found a flyer from the original show. I had forgotten about it. So I'm going to show you all the original flyer for what it looked like back in those days. This was early on. Again, like I said, it was either late 2005 or 2006. It was the original Back to the Bully show. So check it out. This was the front cover of the show. It was one of the first ever shows that we had like this. Um, it was one of the first indoor events that we had. Um, it, was, it was an incredible show. Man. And we had special guests, Paul Wall, Gloria Velez was the host. We did a car show. Um, here's the backside of what the flyer looked like. It was one of the first uh, sanctioned ABKC shows. By far, it wasn't the very first, but it was one of the first ones. And this particular event, Back to the Bullies, it was right here. It was brought to you by the Elite Edge. It was right here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And i just give you a little history on that show because it was actually a pretty historic event. It was one of the events that crossed over some of the borders and stereotypes and things that we had to deal with back in those days that we don't have to deal with today on a large scale because of the fight that we put in in those days. So I'll give you a little history was, and again, I'm not 100% on the dates. It was either 2005, 2006, somewhere. Um, I believe it was October 2005. Anyway, so what it was was we as the Elite Edge, we decided we were going to get together and we were going to host an event in, in Virginia, in Fredericksburg, where I'm from. Well, not really I'm from, but where I was living and where a lot of the history of Razor's Edge was and it was created again right here in Fredericksburg. Um, so we decided we were going to have an event back in those days. The dog shows weren't very big at that moment. It wasn't a lot of, you know, really big conventions or events. We had had some before. We had done one in Florida. Um, and, you know, I know people go back and forth through history talking about what was the first and what was this. And to be honest with you, none of those things that people say like this was the first it doesn't really matter because i mean there was dog shows there's ukc shows my house was an area where people would come every single weekend and a lot of this bully community was built just by people coming together here so to get back into that story we as elite edge decided that we were going to host a show here in virginia at the home of razor's edge and you know we're going to call it back to the bully so we got together and we all put in some money and we had planned this really big historic show and back then we did a lot of things different we didn't have the market that we have today so we had to reach out of our uh, environment a lot of times to, to draw in a market to bring in people so we would try to do things like bring in celebrities bring in you know different types of things um atomic dog was based on the same thing from uh, all elite edge members as well it's one of those things where our world wasn't readily known at that time so in order to get our uh, you know our name out there we searched for like cultures and like things that people would be interested in this like um the car world the the hip-hop world and things like that where we knew that that culture was similar to the culture that we have with the dogs and it would go hand in hand i mean in today's world you can tie in different cultures the tattoo world and things like that so we would always market ourselves 
in ways that we could draw in people and get them involved in this breed. So what we decided to do at this show was we were going to have a uh, guest celebrity and, and some, some other elements to bring to the table. So we had, uh, back then there was a model named Gloria Velez. I don't know if y'all remember Gloria Velez, but she was pretty popular at that time. And she was the MC for the show. Um, she was going to be the host of the show. We brought in uh, Paul Wall. Paul Wall. What's up, Dre? I got to stop for a because I'm sure you remember this. This was some of your original work, right? Ah, looks good, huh? Bam. Actually, my son when he was a little baby and little Ro. But anyway, just found this, Dre. I couldn't believe it when I found it. So anyway, so we know Paul Wall is going to be there. I guess he was pretty popular at that particular moment in time. And, you know, we're going to do a dog show, car show, and bring in, like I said, Paul Wall and a few other things. So we just started to promote this show, and it was one of the first heavily promoted shows that we had ever did. And we had everything we paid for the venue. It was a very expensive, expensive event. The event ended up costing us somewhere around the range of, uh, I want to say, close to $50,000, which was a lot of money back then. Um, but like I said, the Elite Edge and a lot of the members all invested in it. So we planned this big show, and people were flying in from all over the world. Dre, you were one of the people. You came in with a lot of guys from overseas, from Italy, from Malta. So there's a lot of different people that came in for the event. But it was the first time that we ever experienced... Uh, a fight, a kickback. And what happened was we were in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which I didn't really know that it was still kind of a, a good old boys in the background kind of kind of area. I didn't really know that, you know, and I had never experienced that coming from Washington, D.C., where I lived. I've never experienced that type of mentality before. I mean, that was new to me. And we caught a lot of resistance when we decided to have this show here. Um, in fact, it got to the point that they tried every way possible to shut us down on every aspect they could try to shut us down for. Um, the media came out and did this horrible write-up about the show that we were going to have and compared us to serial killers and just an unbelievable thing. We had uh, people talking about how they were going to come out and picket the event and, and boycott it and... It was just one of these things that all of a sudden we had all this resistance that we never knew that we had. And it was a lot of things that were based on stereotypes, racism, just thing, you know, the breed itself. You know, there was a very bad negative perception of, of that breed uh, in the media at the time. And people thought, you know, bad of it. And they just decided they didn't want an event here in Virginia that celebrated this breed, that represented this breed, that had elements of hip-hop and, and other things so they tried every way possible to shut our event down and it got to the point that it was an ongoing battle that I fought for probably four months with me in the city and it, it got to the point I fought city council I fought the police department I fought every element that you could think of here in this in this town to get us to have this event and they tried they tried to shut us down we had rented a nightclub which was going to be the after party where they were going to perform at the after party and um you know after the show and they were able to shut our nightclub down um they came up with a clause that within the elements of that particular area in Fredericksburg that the genre of hip-hop music wasn't allowed to be played um it was just so many different things that i actually felt like we were like on that movie footloose or something where you, they don't allow dancing or any of that stuff so it was just i've never seen anything like that in my life and, and we had a hard time trying to get the event to even occur and nobody was really accepting of it the venue however still won an event because we paid twenty thousand dollars just for the rental of the venue that wasn't including the pipe and drape and every other thing you know, like i said it ended up being a fifty thousand dollar event in the end um and it was a big financial loss but i'll get into that in a second so uh it was one of these things that, that nobody would just accept us they wouldn't accept our culture they wouldn't accept our breed and they didn't want us here and they didn't want us to have this type of event here and they did not want the dogs here and like i said it, it got to the point that we were fighting city council we we're fighting everybody on every aspect um and there was a lot of things that people that were there that day will remember that we had to fight over racism and a, a few other issues so it was a, a long drawn out battle just to have the show um Actually, Derek, it is really sunny. That's why I got shades on. But if you look up here, you can see. But anyway, and it's cold out here right now. So it was a long, drawn-out battle that we had to fight for acceptance. And we had to fight to, to be able to display our dogs and, and do something in an environment like we had. And it was the first time that we ever really spent on a really dressed-up you know, location and things like that. So um, for the three months 
I constantly had, they were trying to find every way they could. I would constantly, I, I think, okay, we're, we're out of it now. Then I'd get another phone call. Now you got to meet with city council. Now I get another phone call. Now you got to meet with gang task force. Now you have to meet with Fredericksburg police. Now you got to meet with, um, I don't, there was like a few other animal control. We had to meet with the animal control. It's like everybody was trying to shut us down any which way possible that they could. And, you know, no, no, Kevin, you're asking who's we. We were the elite edge. We at that time were all the elite edge members. Cruz was one of us. There's a bunch of us that came together. Um, you know, we we're a big family at that time. But anyway, so they tried to shut us down any way they could up to the very last minute. Every single waking moment, I thought for sure they're going to shut us down today. They found another way. They found another way. And we would get by everything that they were doing including, like I said, the horrible media article that came out and everything. So it was about one week out of the show, and people had already booked tickets. People flew in from everywhere. And this is back in the days when everybody came here. I mean, everybody, even the old Gotti line people, Richard Barajas was here. Um, Big Hearn was here with Corrupt. I mean, there was dogs coming from all over the place, people flying in from all over the world. It was the first time the bully world had ever done something of this magnitude before. And the week before, I kid you not, Every single hotel in the Fredericksburg area was booked. We completely booked out every hotel here. I had, and I, we had people literally coming from all over. So there was no way to turn back at this point. And the money was invested. We weren't going to get the money back. And they tried up to the very last moment to stop the event from happening. Um, it got to the point that they were telling me that Animal Control came out and they said the day of that they were going to come to the event. Anybody that didn't have a rabies, didn't have anything with them, they were going to escort them. They were going to take the dogs from them and escort them out of the city limits. So they were going to actually confiscate people's dogs coming in if they didn't have the proper documentation. And back in those days, we didn't know a lot about bringing all the documents and papers with us. So we had to hustle at the last minute and try to figure out solutions for everything. Even the day of the event, or the day before, I'm sorry, the Friday before the event, they called me and told me that I needed a special, a special animal permit to have the event go on the only place to get the permit was at this city office that closed at five and i got the phone call at 4 30 and this was friday the night before the show so i went flying over to the city office got there five minutes before they closed and luckily this lady let me in she was very nice and we talked and everything and she gave me the permit which they didn't think i would get obviously that's why they told me at the last minute which come to find out in the future didn't even need the permit because it was a private venue and those permits weren't even necessary because the venue had all of its own permitting so the day of the show you know we were freaked out we didn't think anything was going to happen and it, it was you had to believe it was animal control at the back door taking pictures of everybody's dogs as they were coming in forcing people to show their documents inside the venue we had gang task force we literally had 15 gang task force going around in bulletproof vests we had to hire extra security we had to hire security with wands i mean the way they portrayed this event that it was going to be just some kind of gang riot or some kind of crazy thing like that we had picketers there picketers i can't even say that word there it was, it was unbelievable i mean really the event shouldn't have gone on um but it did they they did stop paul wall from performing they did stop so many different elements that we had so we just had to kick back and regroup and then in the end you know we had paul wall there and we just let him sign autographs and we just you know, dealt with it that way. And we were on one side, they were checking uh, all the, the documents and trying to make sure everybody had all their rabies. On the other side, we had people in the parking lot working for us, passing out rabies certificates because we were trying any way we could at last minute to make sure that nobody's dog was taken up and bad happened. So it started off really crazy in a really tense environment. But all the dog people showed up. Everybody came, everybody represented, everybody set up their booths. It was an unbelievable turnout. Everybody was there. And I mean, everybody in the bully world at that time was there. Um, it, it, Fabian Chinchester was there with his stuff. I mean, it's just everybody. It, you couldn't imagine all the names. Everybody that was the foundation of this breed all in one house at the same time. And it was the first time for that. So it went on. And as the event went on, all of a sudden the mood changed. The police, the task force, everybody flipped over from this feeling of, we're going to shut this down and this isn't right and all the things they were trying to do to all of a sudden they started to look around and say, you know what, this isn't what we anticipated it being. This is actually a fun event. It got to the point that the gang task force shook hands and they left. They didn't even stay anymore. The extra police and security that they made us hire, people were ended up buying T-shirts, buying collars, um, the animal control. Instead of taking dog pictures of dogs, they ended up actually posing with dogs, taking pictures with dogs. The same 
the freelance star that had written a horrible article before about us ended up coming into the building and praising us and apologizing and wrote a phenomenal article about it and just talked about how great the event was and how it wasn't what they anticipated it being and just they were amazed at just at the quality of the dogs and how friendly the dogs were and the people and it's just it changed perceptions in ways that had never happened before. And what it did was it actually enabled this bully world to continue on. It was one of the times when we, we you know, we encountered the, the biggest resistance ever and we prevailed. We fought and we prevailed. And even though we lost money, I lost probably 70 pounds. I was probably, you know, by the time the event came around, I was probably 120 pounds just from the stress. But we lost so much. What's up, Dave? Bruce, you were part of that, so you remember it. We lost so much back then just to make it happen. But... It was such a gain that it enabled us in this breed to get acceptance and to 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 move forward. And this is what started sparking the events of the future and places that get, you know allowing us to come and rent venues. And it changed everything from that moment on to where you know we really really had resistance. So all of a sudden we started to get acceptance and on many different levels, on from culture to race to everything you could think of, and major acceptance for our breed. So it ended up being an unbelievable successful event. And it ended up being something, one of those big hurdles that we we finally got across, and it was worth it. And I just want to tell everybody, if you're around in those days, even if we don't get along to this day, we've gone different directions, whatever the case may be, if you were there for that part of it, I got nothing but love and respect for you. You all worked together. We fought hard for that. We fought extremely hard for the acceptance, the acceptance of ourselves and our breed. And that particular day was a monumental day for all of us. It was a historic day, and it was something that we all came together on. And we won. And when we fought against all kinds of resistance, and we won. Resistance. So I just want to give all y'all a shout out. Much respect to all y'all that were part of it that day. The original Elite Edge, everybody that played their part. I mean, we did something really historic that day, and it's enabled us to be where we are today and, and you know, continue on. And now, now this thing is phenomenal. I mean, it's it's a worldwide sensation now i mean everywhere you go around the world people are celebrating this breed and the culture and coming together so we fought really hard to get the acceptance of something that to this day exists and is a powerful force now and we truly are a powerful force and the reason we are the powerful force that we are is because we continue to work together and we continue to treat each other as family and work for these dogs so again much respect to everybody out there doing the positive stuff so Again, what I just wanted to remind you all is, because since I found this flyer today, it just made me think about it, and the original Back to the Bullies here in Virginia, in a historic event. So what we're going to do now is, on June 3rd, we're going to bring back Back to the Bullies Part 2. This time, it's not solely brought to you by the Elite Edge. We have a bunch of different groups jumping in just to help, you know, have this event go on. We have Bully Embassy, WBA, Black Label, Elite Edge. We've got ABKC, Bully Supplies, um, Bullypedia. Everybody's coming out. This is going to be an event, a monumental event here in Virginia. Like I said, it's June 3rd, Fredericksburg. It's at the home of Razor's Edge. It's at the home of ABKC. Um, it's one of these things that for us, we just want to welcome everybody back and make it feel like a homecoming to, you know, to finally come back to where a lot of the roots of this whole thing began, this historic event was. So we want to invite all of y'all to come out to Fredericksburg, Virginia on June 3rd and just celebrate the American bully and the camaraderie that we all have. All the groups are trying to pitch in to make this happen. So y'all really want to make sure y'all get out here. It's going to be a two-show event right now. It's an outdoor event. We wanted to do it outside. It's going to be at the Fredericksburg Fairgrounds. We wanted an outdoor event so people could get a feel of what it was like back in those days, but still be the competitive world that we have today. So it's still going to be a strict ABKC show. It's one that we want everybody to compete in. We're bringing two international judges in, one from Serbia and one from Scotland. Paul Byrne from Scotland will be here judging and uh, – uh, Demir Markov will be here from Serbia. Um, both these guys have extensive, extensive resumes. Uh, Demir's got an unbelievable resume. So we want to see everybody in the ring. We don't want to hear any excuses. I don't care if you're a judge, if you're part of a group, if you have the number one dog, if your dog won nationals, whatever the case is, the best of the best are going to come out here and compete because this is one of those shows where we want to see every single person in the ring. Um, 
And aside from that, we want you all to come out here with that laid back personality and just feel like you're coming home. This is right here where a lot of this began. We're going to have food trucks there, taco trucks. I mean, it's just going to be a good time, events for the kids. It's just going to be like a historic homecoming. We've got people all over the world flying in for this one. And when I mean to tell you all over the world, I truly mean from all over the world. It's gotten to the point now that I'm having to rent some, some charter buses because so many people are coming in from out of town. Um, that have never been, some people that have never even been to America before. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do an open house at the ABKC Friday. I think we'll be doing it from noon to four. Um, you'll be able to come in. We'll have some, you know, appetizers and things there so you can, you know, have something to eat, meet the ABKC staff, you know, get to see the office firsthand, do some registrations. In the back, we'll have Bullypedia there doing some registrations, some things they're doing. So it'll just be a nice little thing to get there if you get in Friday, you know, in the morning or Thursday night and you want to come by. Um, you'll get to meet a lot of different people from other countries will be there. So you come do that. Saturday is going to be the event at the Fredericksburg Fairgrounds. Uh, it's going to open. I think uh, the event's going to start somewhere around between 10 and 11 two judges yeah, that's going to be a fun event it's outdoors so you're welcome to bring your tents bring everything they're not going to allow any liquor or anything like that in there however they will sell it there so you'll have the opportunity for beer and food and things like that um we're not going to charge you now we decided we're not going to charge you for tent space or anything like that so come bring your tent set up have a good time come with the intentions of feeling like you're coming back home to a family reunion because that's the way we want it but also have your a game on the other thing that we're going to do at this event is we're going to have special custom trophies that nobody has ever seen before we're having them made right now it's a new theme it's a new look they're unbelievable angela brown's working on these right now for us and when you see these trophies you're going to be impressed the hardware like i said is going to be unbelievable it's going to be comparable to like the nationals event it's custom stuff that you've never ever seen before Aside from just that, Bully Crest Finery has made two unbelievable rings. Wait till you see these custom ABKC rings that are going to also be given away for the best of best of uh, best in show at, at uh, both shows. So not only will you get the new trophies and the custom hardware, but you're also going to get a ring if you if you make it that far in an event. Um, so just just that alone, even the hardware alone is worth coming here. I think we're going to uh, a lot of our out of town guests the next day after the show's over. We're going to take them out down on the water to a place that has crabs a lot of people don't know maryland virginia we're famous for our crabs here and during that particular time of the year the chesapeake bay blue crab is running so sunday anybody wants to get on board and get on the charter we're going to go down there and we're going to eat um and then i think monday there's still going to be people here we're going to give tours of dc and things like that so it's just going to be one of these fun weekends where you just get to come out and really really get to see the the bully community and really get to see how these things really began and compete in a serious competitive way with unbelievable prizes and trophies and hardware and just a phenomenal week it's going to be one of those weekends that you've never seen before in the bully world so we just wanted to show you all how we used to do it and how we do it today and combine the two worlds together and that's what june 3rd is going to do for you so just come on out and have a good time. And I promise you, it's going to be fun. It's going to be competitive. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's going to be like you're feeling like you're coming back home. I think it's something that this bully world needs. And, you know, we miss that camaraderie in the bully world a lot of times. So this is something that we're all coming together to help with. Nobody is actually hosting it. It's just hosted by the ABKC. But, again, a lot of the major groups are coming together to help push this event. And like I said, EE, WBA, uh, Black Label, Bully Embassy, all of them come together to help this. One of these things where ABKC, Bullypedia are teaming up to, to work on this. So you're going to have a great time. Y'all got to come out here and check it out. June 3rd, Fredericksburg Fairgrounds. And again, it's, it's a whole weekend affair. So it's not something that you'd probably just want to come for the day. You probably want to come in early and stay late because it's just, if you want to really get a chance to really meet and see everybody and see this area, it's a perfect time for it. So hopefully you all make it. Um, if not, I'll be seeing y'all at many shows this, this year. I'm going to do my best this year to try to hit as many things as I can. Um, and I'm trying to bring you a lot of different live feeds. Just I really want people to get an uh, inside feel of what really goes on in this bully world and uh, what a lot, we're an hour and a half from DC, Kirk. Uh, so, and, and what a lot of things really go on. Like a lot of people don't really get to see the inside. I know sometimes you sit on Facebook and you get to hear, I don't know, all kinds of crazy things. And there's just so much things going on in the world that sometimes we forget like what really goes on, what's really going on on the forefront. Who are the real people really involved in this bully world? The real people really doing something. The people that live their lives for this. The people that can't wait for every weekend to got out to a show and compete and enter their dogs and 
you know, do this. And there's so many people that save their money and they and they look forward to this and this is all they want to do. And it's like you don't always get a chance to see that side of it. You know, the people that bring their families out there and just this is what they look forward to on a weekend. Like you don't always get to see that. You get to see a lot of people just talking and drama and all these different things. But sometimes we miss the real essence of what goes on in the world and why we really do this and what this is really about. So I'm doing my best to try to bring you all some live feeds from different events so you all will really get to see the true people that are really involved in this bully world and the and the way this has changed people's lives and, and how it's become people's lives. Um, and I must also do some live feeds international because I know a lot of y'all haven't got a chance to see how it happens at international. I just brought y'all Euro national so y'all could see what it's like over there. Um, we'll be doing live feeds from the Philippines. We'll be doing some live feeds from uh, Colombia, you know, a bunch of different places, France. So we're going to give you a chance also to be able to just tune in and get to see what it's like around the world and what these events are like around the world and get to see a little bit different culture and, you know, different things. So I'm going to do my best this year to try to bring you the real side of the ABKC show world and the American bully within that world internationally. So again, like I said, I'm not the best at this. I'm not the best at, uh, you know, all the things you can bring your other dogs, but they're not going to be accepted. This is an ABKC show for ABKC registered dogs. And that's just what it is. So, but you know, I'm getting better and I'm going to get better at, at this and I'm going to continue to do what I can to bring it to you. So again, just make sure June 3rd, if y'all want to see the real faces and what this was really like and how it used to be and get a feel of, how, how our beginning started, but where we are today, come on out. You're going to have a great time. Keep tuning into my live feeds. I'm going to keep them positive. I'm going to just bring you the real side of things so you can really see what goes on in the bully world. And I'll highlight the real people that are really involved, the everyday person that lives their life just to come out and do this for their dogs and for their family and for the fun of it. So that's the side I think that y'all really need to see. That's what's really been missing in our world is displaying that side of it. So hopefully y'all like the feeds. You know, this is this year I'm going to put a lot into it. ABKC, we're going to put a lot into education, which we've been talking about. And I will be bringing you um, all the updates on that so you can see where we're going, what our judges will be learning, how the new training programs go. We will also do our best to bring you a lot of clarification on the American bully breed so you will actually really understand what this breed is, why it is, where it is, what the standards mean, what things look like. So you don't hear all this chatter around what the confusion and misconceptions and things. So we're going to do our best this year to bring you the clarification so you truly understand what this breed is, not from the voices of people that don't know or aren't involved, truly from the ABKC. And we will bring you all the updates. As we're training our judges, we'll be training you as well. So stay tuned for all of that. You know, again, I'll do my best to bring these live feeds to you as much as I possibly can. Um, this year, I'm just trying to invest back into you, the community, back into this breed and into the education of the judges and things like that. So this is going to be a phenomenal year for, for us, not ABKC us, us, our community, you, the people out there every weekend, really, you know, out there doing the right thing. So it's nothing but a blessing to me. I don't do this for me. I do this because... I'm part of who you all are. I'm part of the community. So I just want to uh, congratulate all of you. And I want to say thank you to all of you out there who spend your time going to the events, showing your dogs, educating the public, doing something positive, being involved in a real level for this breed. I want to thank all of you all. It's you all that are actually continuing to make this breed grow. It's you all that are doing the right thing and keeping people together and keeping this community together and doing right justice to the breed. So I just want to say thank you to all all of you all it's you that i continue to work for and it's the breed that i will always continue to work for so thank you again to all of you all out there doing something positive getting involved being on the front line and really doing a part of this community well on that note i got interrupted by poor service so that's really what i wanted to say i just wanted to say thank you to everybody out there doing something positive for this and really doing their I'll do my best to bring you live feeds again June 3rd. Make sure y'all get out here to Fredericksburg, Virginia. Looking forward to seeing y'all. Um, I'll do the next update in the Philippines so y'all get a chance to watch that. Nothing but love, nothing but respect to our community. Thank you all for doing your part. Again, it's been an honor to serve every one of you in this breed. So much respect. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Take care.